Last year we played something called a mega game, a huge ridiculous model UN with aliens featuring 80 players. This year, we're back, featuring our Prime Minister of Japan, Head Scientist of Japan, Head Warrior of Japan, and so many other people, but so many other people. How many yeah. people are there? Hundred, there are hundreds of people. We should be playing the game right now. Let's go, yes. let's go inside. The last time we did this, things were much smaller. 60 humans squashed into an almost rural town hall, running around, trying to save the world from a handful of aliens who were hiding behind a curtain. This time, the scale is almost staggering. 300 people controlling 30 countries, 6 alien factions, 5 private corporations, 3 media outlets, and the Pope, the actual Pope. Not the actual Pope, he sadly couldn't make it, but still it was big. It was crazy, and it was loud. Could Japan save the world again, even though arguably we didn't save it last time? Only time would tell. The team of Japan was made up of Paul and Ian doing science, myself and TD on the military side of things, Keza was our ambassador, Brendan was our UN liaison, and Matt Lees was still the Prime Minister somehow. So, here we are in Japan. The year is 2020, I think, or maybe 2019, I don't know. We've got a great team though. I'm the Prime Minister again, obviously. It's gonna be better than last time. Yes. I'm not gonna talk about Iran. This is Japan. By the way, this is Japan. It's a bit smaller than it was. Um, but we have bourbon cream biscuits, we have um, nice biscuits, we have tiny planes. This is Keza, she is our ambassador. Hello! She's been given a special supply of Ferrero uh, Rocher, uh, which she can use five times throughout the game. She has the ability to, to really spoil somebody. This is our money, this is our money. We've got mega mega bling bling. Um, Basically, every every mega buck does like a thing, and it's like military and stuff. But the thing is, Japan is actually defensive. Japan, Japan is. You're going to be like. Yeah, I know. We can't. We can't actually declare war. Yeah, we can't declare war. That's a hangover. It's we got a defensive force. It's fine. We're not keen on that, so we're just going to look after ourselves, do some stuff. Generally, our plan for the whole game here is the fact that we've got to try and come out of this. A being more technologically advanced than America lost my in China. So we've got to do that. No, not more. Not more. They, they can't, they be, can't more be more than us. Same thing. Let's not be aggressive. Uh, and we, we're going to try and make some money. So I think I'm going to try and actually get into bed with the corporations. At the start of the day, while some big nations had heard whisperings of aliens, the public didn't know that aliens existed. Even though they were on a balcony. But aliens weren't even a problem yet because the world was already broken. First thing on the agenda is Greek nationalists seize Cypriot oil fields and uh, Zimbabwe civil war and famine. So this is for you know, urgent issues for the United Nations Security Council. So I should probably give this to someone. Brendan. Yeah, so these are problems. You're the UN guy. So those are now your problems. Okay, so now I have two million, which is probably going to be enough to either deal with a Zimbabwean civil war or a brewing actual war in the Mediterranean with Greece and Cyprus and Turkey, Israel and Egypt. Oh wow! So, to make be friends with the Mediterranean and the Middle East or let some Zimbabweans die? I don't know. So we signed a contract with you? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And we give you a special price. Although that, a special price on what? Oh yeah, we sell you upgrades from really shit military to medium. We don't need that. Medium to really good. We don't need that. And we sell you our special product, which only we have, is that that unit in space, the SIS? Oh, six, yeah. We have a better version of that. You do? Yeah, it's called a Spear. Apparently, Japan is in charge of the Olympics for 2020, and we've got to get every single country in the world to enter the Olympics. And there are so many tables here, and every table is a country. <laughs> you are obviously welcome to, to, uh, to check the, the coastal area towards us. Coastal area, sure. Hello. Round one. And we deployed some really high-tech interceptors looking for UFOs, and there are no aliens. It's kind of like real life, and we've just spent our budget really badly. If the interceptor teams don't find anything, if there are no UFOs, then you can send them for reconnaissance. And we, we were just looking around Japan, make sure there's no evidence of UFO activity, and so would China! There's an exciting thing of China sort of looking at our shores, and that makes me and TD uncomfortable. I think we held our ground. We gave them the evil eye. <laughs> 
Military tensions between Japan and China seem to be bubbling up. And we swing back to Japan, where the Prime Minister has made some unsavoury friends. How are you? Hello, I'm, uh, I'm from uh, Advanced Industrial Mechanics. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, have you heard about the wonderful work we're doing for children? Uh, we're doing some wonderful work in weapons technology for children all over the globe. We can then do upgrades onto SIFs, but that's a separate project. The spear is exactly the same as a SIF. Uh, okay, we'd like to order a spear. I've got a new SIF. From I mean, who? Admittedly, it is just a piece of paper that says SIF on it. From who? From the... Uh, we signed an agreement with like a local company from Beijing. Beijing. Sign up a corporation? Yeah, man. With Japan. We're all about, like, you know, economic stability and stuff. Our GDP is hot. Just watch them, OK? After Prime Minister Matt had spent a good chunk of the year negotiating a deal to buy Japan some hot new fighter jets, it turned out that the head of the military unequivocally didn't want or need them. Got a great deal. Right? I bought the SIFs. We don't actually need any more SIFs. No, 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 you say we don't need SIFs. It's the first turn. We can fly them anywhere in the world, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we can fly those SIFs anywhere in the world to do anything. Shoot UFOs. Yeah, but if we shoot UFOs down, then Okay. All right, so we don't need five SIFs. Well, it's fine, because why if they get blown up? It's a bargain, though, because usually you have to spend one million every turn for five turns. I know, I know. It was, it was great. five million. No, it was great. But we don't need it. Yes. But it was still a good call. Just saying. Well, if you hear of anyone wanting to buy a SIF? The problems oh, right. brought up at the UN have been settled. I've just, I've been to the UN and we all placed some money for some things. Uh, I came back and I told Matt that, I told Matt that they were all done. In reality, I, I have no idea what transpired. I, I, I don't know what's going on in that room. They've dismantled it and put it, on, put it somewhere else as well. I, I don't know what's going on. Amazingly, Brendan hadn't actually lost his mind entirely. The UN had been moved in order to make room for a brand new location that would soon become relevant. But Antarctica isn't terribly relevant to Keza, who's organising the Olympics. This is my first turn. This is everyone who's coming to the Olympics. And it says Saudi Arabia, yes. Everybody, yes. Everybody's coming to the Olympics, who's except for Nigeria and whoever Holy See are. The Pope. Oh, the Pope's not coming to the Olympics. I don't think the Pope's got the hugest Olympic team. The Pope should just go by himself. He should. I'm in the process of preparing to enter myself as the, um, the Vatican's Olympic team. So we're very much looking forward to that. And I just have to get everybody to attend and bring their little envelope. And then inside this special envelope is a bunch of playing cards. But mainly it's a PR thing, because if everyone attends the Olympics, we get money from tourism, and everybody comes together in a spirit of global cooperation, which is very important. The only sticklers so far have been Pakistan. <laughs> Pakistan have been hesitant about committing to the Olympics, and I don't know why, but I'm not sure sending spies to Pakistan to ask why they're not attending the Olympics is the best use of our money. Our Prime Minister, however, decided that sending spies to Pakistan to ask why they weren't coming to the Olympics was the best use of our money. Maybe we should spy on... Pakistan will work out why they don't come to the Olympics. No, this is the dumbest use no, of our money. No. We only, if the entire region comes to the Olympics, we get one more yeah, dollar. Yeah, but every, how many regions are there? Ask Pakistan about the Olympics again. If they're still evasive, we might actually want to look into why. Because we don't want to get like the Olympics blown up by aliens or something. Because that, that be sounds like the sort of oh, thing that, that would, would happen. Be bad. That would be bad PR. I know, right? Because right. then everyone will think we're bad guys. I'm going to ask them. I'm really worried about that's, it now. I'm really worried about it. If something bad happens at the Olympics, that's all on us. I know. And everyone will think it was planned. Who are we spying on? We want to find out why Pakistan aren't coming to the Olympics. That is so I know a it red is. herring. I know it is. However, if it isn't a red herring, then we're going to be in big, big trouble. Because what if they have heard something? And what if, imagine if something goes wrong at the Olympics, we're going to get blamed. Everyone's Dude, gonna we're going to get blamed for sending spies into Pakistan. No. The UN. I'll do it if you tell me to, because I work for you, but that is the dumbest thing, I swear to God. <laughs> With respect, Mr. President. Sending spies into a foreign country is way worse than asking them and accepting they don't want to come to the Olympics. All right, we'll just ramp up security. Okay. You can pay it on completion. Okay, we don't get the second. Yes. Until, yeah. Brilliant. So, Quinns was really worried about the whole idea of me spying on Pakistan to work out why they're not coming to the Olympics but I'm genuinely really worried about it I think that maybe they do know something and if, if it could be like Independence Day the aliens come when everyone's in one place and then suddenly it looks like we've lured the world leaders into a trap so I paid a corporation to spy for us which means that we won't get blamed if, it, if, they, if their spy gets caught they might work out as soon as because we're asking about Olympics but nobody knows so I think it's really good but don't tell anyone I've spent two million on that which is a bit much maybe but 
meanwhile, in science land... We've already got semi-autonomous vehicles. No, I wrote a paper about, basically, the Mary Poppins model of travel. My end game is for us all to be uploading a consciousness into the cars. Like and the film. truly being free. Like in the film, exactly. Cars. Except we'll be flying too. Distributed development via Tumblr. What we can do to push science forward. We can get everybody on Tumblr sharing their research. You know, d demonstrating things through GIFs, short power, basically just, you know, clicking share and never attributing the source because that doesn't matter. I think that is the way for us to work together with a more sort of global scientific consciousness, uh, particularly for people who have attention spans of about 10 minutes, which is nowadays everybody, certainly me. Despite the handshakes and Haribos and general good vibes, increasingly everyone seemed quite worried about China. Everyone in South Asia, in East Asia, including us, is worried about expansionist China. We need like, relations at the I moment. There's no like nastiness happening. Like so, certainly not up front. So China are being a bit shifty. We don't really trust them. I just realised my flies are undone, so I'm just going to do that. <laughs> China are being shifty. We're concerned about it. So we're going to have to be firm with them about them not coming to our airspace. While the Prime Minister had his eyes on China, our military team was talking to the United Kingdom about their experience with aliens. About a couple, of, well, one over UK, some around uh, Germany and things. Uh, Gilly, Gilly, yes. I believe my uh, military tell me yes, we've been fine. Do you know what happens when they land? We have no information of what's happened when they've landed. But you've seen them confirm landings well. I have been told by my intelligence sources that there have been confirmed landings. Quinns and TD had rightfully become worried that shooting down your UFOs might not be the right idea. But aliens might not even be the main priority, especially with the nuclear armament of Iran. Not just rumours, but I think there is possibly yes. dossiers saying that they are producing and possibly very nearing uh, creation of nuclear weaponry. Yes. And while things were getting heavy with the Prime Minister of Britain, the Prime Minister of Japan was a little less busy. This is, uh, this is what countries run on in the future, anyway. Meanwhile, it turned out that Matt spending two million on spies in Pakistan was a bit of a waste of money. Quotation. They are, however, now going to the Olympics again. The bureaucracy is not in the state it should be. Yeah. That's a bit vague. Yeah. That sounds worrying. But they are going to be them. And it just kicked off. So round one, no UFOs. Round two, UFOs appeared. Now last time we played Watch the Skies, the UFOs kind of floated around, they created bases, we didn't know what was happening. This time, we failed to shoot one down over Vietnam and it just blew up all of Vietnam's submarines and warships. They're gone. So this is a lot more like an Independence Day kind of situation all of a sudden. And uh, I'm looking forward to telling our Prime Minister about it. Okay, massively important. You need to go and talk to Vietnam immediately because when the last time the UFOs kind of floated around and did weird things to yes. the map, yes. we failed to shoot down a UFO of Vietnam this time and it blew up all of Vietnam's fleets. In what I can only describe as a moment of shame and madness, I decided to deal with this catastrophe by trying to sell them aeroplanes. I even got Paul involved in the pitch, even though I don't think he really knew what was going on. Science is so much... I just, every turn I write a paper about something, I hand it in, I get points. I occasionally give talks about topics, and I have... Like always been received. I have a massive pocket full of these tokens, and I'm now getting other countries coming up to me, and they have like, they'll have one of these, and they'll say, do you want one of these for a thing? So I've got, I have so many, and it's kind of hilarious because it's like being Rupert Murdoch and someone saying, you know, I'll give you ten pounds if you do a thing. It's like, and no one knows, no one knows that I've got so much in here. It's amazing. We've had a message. I think it's from the aliens. Right, okay. A of worlds. Well, no, we're all taking on those. A of too. worlds. Is that aliens? Yeah, this is a Type B message from the aliens. Who else has seen this? Just. We want to be friends. And then it says A of Worlds. That has to, we have to assume that's Maybe a name. Maybe it's a name, yeah. Yes. Of we, so we, can, we, we beam a message into space with A of Worlds, which is the only way we can communicate with the aliens. A of Worlds, we love you, we want to kiss you. Uh, more like, we need you to stop uh, incursions into our airspace. That's better. We want to be friends, just tell them a place to meet. Okay? This could be really Tell good. Tell them to meet us at a certain time, mm -hmm. land a UFO at a certain place at a certain time. Can we say we'll meet them after the Olympics? No. No. We need to do this immediately. 
but I don't want to. I want to do the Olympics. They're the most important people. They might not want to be friends. They might want to come to meet in the Olympics. Hokkaido is the island to the north. We know we're the Olympics. All right, Hokkaido. Okay, go. Whoosh, slap, bang, we had a plan. We were going to get the aliens to meet us at Hokkaido. Well, providing they could read the message. It's not very well written, I promise. Uh, it's not very good at Well, that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> that will only be theirs. Yes. <laughs> okay. And while the team didn't have a clue what was going on, we sent one cameraman to watch the message being delivered. I think I found myself. Right. Got a message. This is a message from Japan. Oh yeah. To Japan from up here. Yeah. You may recognise that. World. Okay. World, world, yeah. That's our response. Okay. Can you handle that? Yes, we can handle it. Sure. You know what I'm gonna do with it. I can handle it. <laughs> well I'm glad you. Thank you. Are you an association? Yeah. What I'm doing? Yes. So you've been you get a message back yeah. on a channel which you recognise. Do not okay our us at no, okay meet. The team would then spend the next hour furious that the aliens hadn't replied to our message. Meanwhile, Keza was making the final preparations for the 2020 Olympics. There are more excitement about the Olympics, yeah. which are happening next phase. They are. In Tokyo, which is the foyer. We'll, we'll publicise it as much as we can. Very much appreciated. Thank you. As, as a quick question, what would you say it speaks to? There are multiple um, political military actions going on all over the world. Do you think it is appropriate to be running the Olympics at such a politically unstable time? I feel that the Olympics are more important than ever at a time of political instability, although we have taken precautions to make sure that the safety of everybody has been taken into account. Um, sure, that gives great peace of mind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Olympics! Oh. Olympics! Olympics! Olympics. Thank you very much. Hello, welcome to the Olympic Games! If you would like to participate in athletics, please place your card on the floor in front of you. And remember which one's your card. <laughs> Japan 2020 Olympics. It's here and it's incredibly boring. So the turn after we agreed to kind of divide up where we cover airspace from UFOs. A UFO has appeared not in Japan itself, but in the ocean just around it. So <laughs> through like Herculean effort of diplomacy, no one is shooting it down this turn. <laughs> And that might be a mistake, but we'll find out. It's not it's not troubling anyone. It's just it's just floating, it's just hanging out. And they may have sent it before they received our message of peace. We didn't win anything at our own Olympics. But we did get all this money for everyone turning up, thanks to me hassling them for the last two hours. So that's a plus. Mr. President, for our economy, five million. Yeah, that's all we got. For all of that? Yeah. For the Olympics? No. Yeah, we didn't win anything at our own. Nobody died. Everyone well, turned up and no one died. Everyone well, turned up and no one died. I know, I'm very happy about that. Big PR also. I'm going to go and talk to a newspaper. Actually, do you want to talk to a newspaper? Yes. Today? Meanwhile, in the rest of the world, worries about Iran have seemed to calm down. Zimbabwe is still a little bit screwed. Aliens have been seen landing in the Vatican, which has entirely freaked Italy out. And loads of people have gone to war with Greece. Thankfully, this isn't our problem. There was a meeting at the UN. Taiwan has had an earthquake. A nuclear reactor looks uh, a bit weird. And uh, we've been asked to go and send a scientific delegation there uh, to check things out. France wanted to come along, so they're doing that. Uh, but we're very much leading it, and I have told the world media as much. The South Africans, for some reason, sent an interceptor over Antarctica and pissed everybody off. And they were brought in front of everybody at the UN because they don't have a delegate. And we're just, we're just like ear bashed about doing this. Antarctica and aliens was an obvious worry, but the UN was still dancing around the issue when it came to extraterrestrials. Would South Africa be prepared to share? Any yes, as I say, we've yeah, got some yeah. interesting atmospheric meetings, polar cap um, photography, ice cap stuff. Um, okay, so we've got this news, News Chronicle. 
Um, the good news is there's nothing bad in here. The bad news is, you remember that Taiwanese um, earthquake, that the reactor we sent some people in? Well, our scientists have been faffing around and haven't got the chance to go in, in yet. Meanwhile, a reporter comes up to me while I'm standing at the world, like the region map, and just says, what, uh, so how do you feel about Taiwan, blah, 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 blah. And then he lands this on me. He says, what would you do if you found out there was, say, a reactor leak in Taiwan? And I said, well, you know, it'd have to blah, 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 and, you know, give them the off, whatever. And he says, there is. Because they've had two reporters in there looking over everything, and they find out there, there already is a leak. And we haven't had anybody in there yet. So this is all good news. We're, we're happy for this stuff. But very soon there's going to be a newspaper coming out with a big story saying, Nuclear reactor leak, Japanese scientists, too slow and useless. Thank you everyone for coming to Japan Science Conference. I think the most important thing that happened is I got to deliver my paper on Tumblr. I disagree with that, I don't think that would happen. Yes. What are your suggestions? Yes. Yes. And I got credit for that and I've now got, I've, I have so many tokens in my pocket for science. There's two kinds of scientists. There's pure scientists who do a lot of academic hypothetical stuff and they're applied scientists. And the applied scientists sort of are turning up at these science events and we feel, pure scientists like us feel they're taking over. So we sort of voted for them to not come to the next conference. And we're also going to kind of try and do a thing where we have our own conference just like somewhere else and they don't turn up. Because the work that we do is slightly, it's just slightly different. It's this like is about the point in the day we started to get the inkling that maybe the work the scientists were doing wasn't particularly important to us, them, or anybody at all. As we know, the internet runs on cats. It's powered by cats. It's evolved over millions and millions of years. And by using the big data servers... Today, rats. Tomorrow, humans. Can we do it with cats? Okay, so the next edition of the, the newspaper came out. There was still nothing in it about the, the leak. But I have a feeling maybe they're holding back or maybe they were just saying, so I'm going to go and find out. There's nothing there. They f forgot about it. So, we've got... It's all kicking off. We've got a lot of alien cards on the table, which are like these big question marks, basically you know what they are. Maybe we're supposed to be meeting them soon. Um, and yeah, I don't know what's going on. They're doing a lot of business with corporations, trying to use them as spies, because if our spy dies, then game over. Can't get another one, so I'm trying to pay for other spies. We're doing quite well, I think, without any problems. We've got a decent armed force. I don't know, it's... I just don't know what's going on, basically. There's a ton of stuff going on, and it's got to the point of the day where it's just my mind is buzzing with millions of things, and I'm just trying to get an idea of what's going on in the world right now, frankly. Because, like, I realised that the crazy thing about this compared to the last Mega game we did was that last time we didn't really know what was going on, but this time, like, I had a clue. Like, that entire half of the room, all those people over there, no idea. Like, Europe? Like, Europe could be gone, for all I know. I just, it, I don't know. I actually get all of my information from the newspapers, which are literally... Well, I have to read these just so I know what's going on. Apparently there's... Yeah, there's some real beef going on in Europe. This whole thing is like Israel and Turkey and Greece. They've got a joint military offence in Greece. Greece is being attacked by the Americans, Israel and Turkey. I don't have any idea what that's about, and to be honest, I don't really care. So while the people of Earth were doing their best to ignore the fact they weren't very good at their jobs, out in space, the aliens were having problems of their own. Well, currently the problem is we're trying to lo learn a local language, but we're getting shot at it every time. So we're trying to get a couple of natives just abducted so we can interrogate them, but we're being met with violence everywhere. Also, we'd like to get hold of some local materials. The thing is, Nobody's actually communicated to us properly because we can't really make out what they're saying. But apparently, we can chat to the Pope. What? Apparently, we can chat to the Pope. Have have We've sent a message to the Pope. Oh. The Russian Federation has decided to make the public through the world that the aliens are here.
the news of aliens has obviously shocked the world and shocked Japan hugely. Uh, currently, we don't know what the situation is. There are lots of people across the world with lots of things at once to ensure that as a race, as humanity, we take the best next steps for the future of the planet. Have you had any diplomatic contact with the aliens? Not as of yet. Have you had any military contact with the aliens? We have, to a degree. Unfortunately, the announcement of the existence of aliens has kind of overshadowed my Olympics, uh, as you can see the front pages. But, but look! Olympics bring world together, full winners list on website. So I think all those turns of effort were definitely, definitely worthwhile. We heard a rumour that there was something big happening in Antarctica, so I went over to the table and had a bit of a spy. Um, and it seems like there is something very mysterious happening there. These four cards that no one knows what they are. Um, there's a big international presence. Antarctica, um, yes, there's definitely stuff going on. Let me just check. Are you involved in there? We're involved, yeah, we don't really know what's going on. There. So why, why are you militarily involved? We're, we're not militarily involved, uh, I should hasten to add. Good. We are purely there for research purposes. You guys are sending a SIF down there and it's a long way from Antarctica to Sorry, Japan, yeah. so I'm just curious why well, you guys... Every, well, because you've gone to Antarctica already. Uh, we've you? got a base down there, so a uh, science base. But there was tons of people all going to Antarctica. Yeah, and we're trying to discourage that right now. So we have a uh, research presence in Antarctica, which we maintain for a number of decades. What's going on? Well, just allowing the countries which have ever had a treaty down there, and you know, with the whaling situation, it's always been touching. I mean, right, the whaling situation. Did you catch that? Because we didn't on the day. This was going to come back and bite us very hard. Airspace we're not, this we're airspace not, this airspace. We're not going there in a military capacity, I assure you. Oh, it's right. just the fact that I, I've been talking to your superiors and nobody will tell me, as an ally, we have an ally who's not telling us why there's a huge influx of people in Antarctica, so we've been left with no other option. I'll get our, so you find nothing? There's nothing up there? Well, well, this is the alarming thing, is we found nothing, but I do not believe there is nothing there. I don't know if it's Antarctica or the Arctic. So you know, you know there's something up north as well, do you? I think. Sure. We found, as I said to you up there, we found nothing. But I'm now hearing rumours that there was things to find that we just didn't find. Really? So after the entire world spent millions deploying all kinds of military forces to Antarctica, the official line from everyone is that nobody found anything anything. But that was fine, because it turned out the world now had a much bigger problem. Look our Olympics puff piece. A sidebar. Yeah. Have you seen this? Oh no. There's an asteroid. It's gonna hit Earth in nine months. The Australians researched it. Someone said to them there's a 25% chance it's gonna hit. And then they researched it again and they found out it's 100% chance it's gonna hit. Basically, America, Australia, and us have no, like, the, the whole UN knows about it. No, he made that announcement. Uh, uh, every, mace, every muscle in my face is now twitching. What do we do? What do we do indeed? Thankfully, it looked like our science team was hot on their case. Right. <laughs> my, my science nemesis is Germany. Uh, for this turn, I'm actually not going to do a paper about a particular new science topic. I'm going to do a paper that... Uh, illustrates problems inherent in German research methodologies and I'm going to run round see if I can get some of the other countries to co-sign this and my, my ambition is just to get them to discredit Germany. An asteroid is going to hit the Yes, no shit, we got a press release about that. What's actually happening? I didn't get a press release and I really need the toilet. You know, scientists have to go and talk to Australia and America and get a powwow and find out how to fucking stop it and then just throw money at it. I mean, yeah, you know that this is your job, right? <laughs> I've just been putting together a petition to discredit my nemesis. To be honest, I spent the whole turn pursuing a personal vendetta. No! I need no. that! This is the man you need to talk to, okay? This is the man you need to talk Sorry, to. Sorry, mate. I think you found I'm actually the expert on this, uh, this serious tour. This is not good news, is no, it? No, it's not. It's not. It's and this is a thing that show. concerns everyone. This is something. Right, okay. So uh, I'm, I'm going to jump back into this next turn and we'll find out exactly where it's going to hit. Do you region. have that piece of paper that I actually spent quite a while getting different signatures for so that I can get the German scientist fired. That doesn't sound very important. It's quite important for me having prizes. Yes. So, so this doesn't affect Australia anymore? Oh, uh, well, he's, there's a petition going around about German science. basic science being bad. If you find it, he's taken it. Okay. If you could sign it. I think, yeah. Because they're just in rubbish. The, in the face of asteroids yes. hitting the world, 
like certainly, personal gripes and sort of cer- some no, of the second view. I know it's actually for you pre- Sign it, get it out the way. Yeah. Yeah. When this isn't a problem, you'll get it back. <laughs> nice. I mean, there, there's lots of. If there is a an asteroid coming, but that's like, what are we going to do? No, listen. If well, there Na- is a, NATO kind of want to blow it up, and she, which is fine because apparently yeah. they have all the well, stuff to do. Why don't we let Paul tell us what's happening? Okay, asteroid. what's going on with the asteroid? Uh, it is definitely going to hit, according to two independent sources. So Australia is sure it's going to hit. The US is sure it's going to hit, rather than 25%, which the report says. What if? The aliens are here because they knew about this and they're somehow like working out if we're worth okay. saving. You, I mean, you can talk to them. This wild theory was the first of many, but it seemed like our Prime Minister was starting to lose the plot. I've got no idea what is happening now, and I don't mean that on a like on a like game level. I just mean that on like every level. I feel like my brain just has been bombarded with so much information. We've got an asteroid that's gonna hit the earth. We've got all these countries, some of them want to talk to me about I've got corporations badgering me about deals. I hadn't realised that with this expanded version of Watch the Skies, it's not just that there are more countries. All these different things. You're constantly like, you owe this corporation a million. You've got to do this. Or somebody wants to talk to you about a deal. It's like you are constantly harassed. I'm hugely jealous of the United States with their 15-person staff just to be able to delegate like mad. Like The president doesn't have to deal with this stuff. He can just say, yeah, talk to that guy, talk to that guy. I don't know what's happening. We wanted to talk to the aliens and they're not replying to our messages. We can't send them three text messages without a reply. That's just ridiculous. I don't know what to do. I, everyone keeps coming up to me and saying, Quinns is constantly being like, what are you doing? Do something important. Why is it not relevant right now? It's, it's amazing, come on. I genuinely don't have a clue what to do. Well, you do whatever Matt tells you because we need you to figure out. Yeah. I've tried getting information out of the world leaders. No one's, no one's said anything. I could just go to America and just be completely honest with them about everything that's going on and hope that they then tell us something, but I don't know. What do I do? So France and Germany are meeting with the aliens, are they? Right now. Right now. Why didn't the aliens return on Monday? We sent them really nice messages. We've been rejected by aliens. We have a time of peace right now, actually. Absolutely nothing is happening in East Asia. We've got guys are investigating South Africa. I think, like, you two going to Africa and finding out what the hell is happening there would be good. At this point, while East Asia was a bastion of peace, we'd started to hear some disturbing things from Kenya. Do we invest money in showing up our, our, our army? No. Okay, fine. Categorically not. There's no military threats. It seems like the aliens might be doing the whole we're coming in peace and then boom. But they're just really racist aliens. Yeah. I think they might be. It's, I mean, that seems to be the pattern. That they are attacking. Who I mean, they attack? They, they messed up Kenya. To be honest, it's probably just that they're picking off the weakest countries. Vietnam. Oh, maybe that's their game plan. Back to the UN, and you can pinpoint the exact moment here that Brendan stops caring. To the point that he started publicly slagging our government off. Our core, our block. <laughs> Other members of the government are iffy. iffy you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're like too keen on these old alliances. Okay. So, okay. But you're looking for a, a new Japan, a new alliance. A new. Yes, that was Brendan talking to the Chinese ambassador describing the Japanese government as, and I quote, iffy. But the biggest revelation of the day was yet to come. We just spent a huge chunk of our budget on a secret dossier from Israel the Joshua Protocol. Reduced from 20 million from Israel. It's called the Joshua Protocol. We don't know what it is, but hopefully it's gonna be worth 10 million. It feels a bit light. I hope before my time, I'm missing a meeting. Who is it? I don't know who that is. The Mark Commode. Looks a bit like Mark Commode. <laughs> you gave him 10 million for that. A photograph. Maybe it means something. What exactly is the meaning of this? This is our Joshua protocol. The best person to speak to would be our chief of defense. What exactly is this? That's Mr. Joshua. Who is Mr. Joshua? It's from Lethal Weapon. I thought it was from a film. Yeah. 
What is this? It's a picture of Mr. Josh that you've just charged us ten million dollars for. We never, we never sold it. Aim sold it, didn't it? It's a good picture. Perhaps put it on your wall or something. So Israel had just conned us out of most of our money. A meteor was hurtling towards the earth. Our prime minister was on the verge of a breakdown and the aliens still hadn't texted us back. Come back for part two where the Pope relocates and something weird is happening with cats.